Hello everybody. Today I went back to that dealership, which is uh, Highland Park Ford and Lincoln. I think they used to be a Mercury at some point, but no longer. And this is the place where I filmed several cool things, um, uh, including but not limited to those two destroyed town cars, the limos, some other vehicles. Uh, and I came back here because unlike all the other you know, Ford slash Lincoln dealerships that I visited over the last couple months that I've been doing these videos, these guys actually have cars, like car cars. Yes, they have tons of SUVs. They have a whole row of SUVs and buses and vans, but they actually have, you know, Lincoln Continentals and they're right here front and center, really crapped on, but I'm sure that could come off. And unfortunately, these are all locked, but they have a lot of other cool vehicles in here. And my goal today is to spend some time just walking around and see what interesting thing I can come up with because like I said it's very rare these days that I go to a dealership and they actually have sedans and in this case they have a bunch of these Continentals here which they're all, all locked unfortunate but maybe if I walk long enough you know I'll find something um, including you know maybe some new Fords or when I say new Fords I mean like new uh, newer because I know like a new Ford right now is this Ford Escape thing, which I honestly hate the way it looks. Uh, but you know, this is considered quote unquote new vehicle, which honestly, I don't see what the big deal is about. And you see it even is unlocked, but I can quickly jump inside. It's got the new car smell, but ultimately I think it's pretty similar to an old Ford Escape. So, yeah, it's got the tiny screen with the sink. It's got very basic cloth interior. Got some details, but this is, you know, when I think of a, of a new, you see, this is a demo. Think of a new Ford. Yeah, they have tons of these things, which I personally am not a big fan of. But if I walk long enough here and don't get cooked to a, a crispy crisp, I hope I will find something that's A, unlocked, and B, that would be interesting. So it would be interesting to see an unlocked Continental. I've driven a Continental before. I've, I sat in it. I test drove it. It's nothing, nothing fancy. Uh, but, you know, it's still, I would still rather be filming that than, than, let's say, this giant van, which is also locked. So anyway, let me walk around for a little bit. I'll see what I can come up with. One thing to add is that this place, like this dealership, even though it's a, it's a Ford and Lincoln, they don't seem to have any clear distinction as far as where's Ford and where's Lincoln. Also, where are cars, where are SUVs? They're kind of all scattered across. I know from my previous visit to this place is that they have like all their limo style, like back there. There's my car. And then besides that, I, I don't really know. Like they seem to be scattered. I think where I'm going right now is actually that, like that's more of like their service area, which I hope to find something cool. This is where I found that uh, Sebring that I filmed. So hoping to find something interesting. And they also have music playing. So this is a very old style. If you guys can hear this, I will survive. Yeah. So this is something the dealerships used to do back in the day, but when I say back in the day, you know, I'm not that old, but but I do know that this was a popular thing to do, to just blast music, obviously to attract customers. Maybe somebody's walking past the dealership or something like that. All right, so hoping to find something good here. So that's exactly what I was talking about. You know, I love coming back to this dealership because every time I do, I find something cool. So here we go. We got a Lincoln Continental, an actual livery vehicle, unlocked. I think it just, I think it was just here for service uh, because it does look washed, although today is a Sunday, so I don't know why they decided to wash it if they did. Um, and yeah, and it is unlocked, so I'm definitely going to be jumping inside. And it does look like it has the, the dealership's um, license plate holder. So yeah, this is obviously somebody who most likely bought this car from here to use as a, as a livery and it's getting serviced, whatever. I don't know what it is. And it looks like in this corner, there's a bunch of others. There's an MKT, 
There is also a Ford Expedition. So these are the actual service vehicles that you know you and I as a private citizens can, can hire, can hop in. There's that Sable that I filmed earlier. And before I jump into this thing, I wanted to kind of show you this interesting. So this is a new Ford Ranger, which is supposed to be like the cheaper, you know, smaller version of their very famous F-150. And it is locked. And it just says like SXT, which looks like it's the base model, but that's not even the point. I saw this little sticker. Asking price of this vehicle is MSRP is, is uh, disclosed on the label, but then this additional service fee of $349. What is this for? <laughs> like, you know, I really wish that someday car manufacturers and car dealerships, they agree on a price of a car. That's just going to be the same no matter what dealership you go with. So, so am I led to believe that the MSRP of this vehicle, $36,050, plus whatever it says there on the other side, $349, I don't get it. Plus it has right here, special $299 perma-safe coating. Oh, look. It's actually made in the U.S. Kind of, sort of. Yeah, 70% of this car is made in the U.S. Okay, well, that's nice. That's interesting. But anyway, yeah, this is just a sidetrack. But I was like, <laughs> why? Like, we just put it on the window sticker. That's what it's there for. So anyway, getting back to this, Continental. So I spoke a lot about, you know, my town car and how this Continental was not the same, blah, blah, blah. But the bottom line is, this is the best we have for now. And I think there are some 2020 Continentals out there. And then they're being discontinued. So... Let me just, since this is the first time I actually encountered one unlocked since I started doing these videos, let me comment on the fact that I like how it looks. It doesn't look, it doesn't look super special, but it does look, you know, it has a certain presence to it where it doesn't have to be flashy. Uh, I don't particularly like the rear end, how it says Lincoln on it with nothing else, no star, like why are they not putting it everywhere, but... Whatever, you know, that's what they decided to go with. But you got chrome exhaust tips, got nice rims. That whole belt line door handles, I mean, it's fine. You know, I know it's designed to, when you look at it like this, there's no way for you to see that there are door handles, which is futuristic, but then when you look at it from this angle, it just looks like little ears popping out. So I don't know. I mean, it's whatever. I do like this mirror housing. It's very hot to the touch right now, but you know, it's a nice touch, nonetheless. The front, so at least they didn't, they didn't uh, shame putting a Lincoln in there, the, the star. So, mm, I don't know, it looks okay. I think from the front and from the side, it looks okay. From the back, it looks a little weird. So, as an, a, a real workhorse vehicle, so whatever. Oh, he's got a parking permit, okay. So he's got some sort of a registration, I guess, for it to be a limo in, in Illinois. No sunroof, because once again, this is a work vehicle, it's not a luxury car. So here is that famous keypad, which transitioned itself to the door as being a touch-sensitive button. And here is what your average limo driver, when I say limo, I mean like livery, so it doesn't have to be a limo. This is, I think, a standard wheelbase car, anyway. So what do you get? So first of all, this being for chauffeur service, you don't get the 30-way adjustable seats. You get very basic seats right here, front and back, and then uh, the back. It does get the memory feature, which I'm kind of surprised. It's got three-person memory, and it does have this um, a lumbar. This is a lumbar support. They don't put any controls down here anymore, but this is cool because this is the electronic release, but then this is the manual release in case if this thing fails, so... That's it. All right. So what do you get? You get all the standard four controls right there for the lights, for the trunk, for... Oh, this is interesting. I never knew that it had like this little cubby right here until I saw this button. Hmm. Okay. This looks like some sort of auto stick uh, air freshener, sort of incense. Uh, it's got the parking brake release or parking brake activation electronic right here. You have a very, very industrial type leather, which is extremely hot to the touch, on the steering wheel. No wood, 
I don't think these cars even have the wood option. So this, I've seen this little bit being being chrome, but in general, uh, this is not not on this model. Once again, I'm guessing this is the very basic model, this being a show four car. It does smell still nice, so maybe it's not too old. Uh, got all the, what, electronic dash, I think? Yep, no key detected, okay. Got all the basic controls, the paddle shifter. Why do they put these things on, on, on everything? Just why? You have either simulated weather or some sort of vinyl on there, on the dash. Oh, that's a nice cubby right there. That's big. You can fit the USB sticks in there. Um, this, you see, once again, because everything is kind of on the screen, I don't really know how to... Oh, there you go. So it does work. What about if I click climb it? No, so I don't think so. Unless it's these buttons somewhere here, which I don't think so. I don't think this thing has heated, um, heated seats or cold seats. I think it's just this. Yeah, but it's nice that it has that. It has the nav. I'm actually surprised that it does have the nav. So unless the nav comes standard. That's that's weird that it has this. It has the PRND right here with the sport, the shifter. You have blank switches here. I hate that, but you do have some other controls. Auto hold. That's for you to hold the, not having to hold the brake. And it looks like the button is actually starting to peel. It has the park assist, park aid. I have some basic crap down here. So what else? You have this wood paneling right here. Interesting, interesting. Armrest. Well, decent. It's it's comfortable. It's nice and squishy. The seats themselves, once again, they're kind of, they're not soft weather. I don't understand why people don't put soft weather in cars anymore. So let's look in the back. So this is the business end of it. So here's what I tell you. I think the rear seats are softer than the front. Now, it's also good look to see how thin these seats are. Now, these seats, they adjust a lot of different ways on on the optional vehicles but i mean on on, on options uh, but at the same time it's uh it's very thin i think back here you have decent amount of adjustment plus you have these pillow looking things where i can just kind of wrap around them like kind of on an airplane and also you know you have this shade oh and then you do have auto recline it's weird because like the way it looks, I think on the higher end uh, models, you have like the full seat control here, but th this just looked like an afterthought. I'm like, what is this? Like this it doesn't say anything, but then, yeah, this is, yeah, so it adjusts. Okay, it's decent. Okay. You have the release and they also have the lock and unlock button. And then interestingly enough, you don't have, um you don't really have an emergency release in case if this fails or the battery is dead on this version how would the customer get out if the battery died for whatever reason so there's some sort of a panel missing there anyway but you do have speakers it's nice it's roomy back here uh now i'm trying to think like do these come with a long wheelbase i am not sure not sure i gotta check it out but some sort of controls or shell for you to put oh look it's got lincoln stars in here so they're not ashamed of their Lincolns. But then you have a USB thing. Something is plugged in that runs underneath. Oh, and then here, what do you have here? Oh, okay. So you have some controls back here. Now, keep in mind, I'm not sure if this is some sort of a special a limo package or not. But it's interesting how you have these arm this armrest full of controls. So what do you have? You have audio controls, display... Oh, look. Okay. And then you do have, you know, I usually don't have music in my videos. I just don't want to mess with it. There you go. It's okay. So this is the controls right here. And then down here, you have some napkins and stuff, holder. So what else? You have the shade button. And then these do not press, but I think these would be for heated seats if indeed it did have it. Because here I can see the outline for where the air blows, if you guys can see it with me. And then this is the fan speed, this is the temperature readout, you have your source, seek. But then here you have a definite button. Oh wow, I'm sweating all over the place. 
But then here you have heated seat placeholders, but they're not here. Oh, look, the, the room is fine. The room is great. I mean, it's definitely good. And then you have these Lincoln, probably factory floor mats, rubber. That's nice. Let's look at the trunk. So what would a limo driver have trunks wise? Okay, so interesting how it doesn't have the factory floor mat, but it does have this cheapo carpet that the person kind of cut out to fit. The trunk is decent. It has a pass-through. Let's see, it does have this chromey handle. Yeah, okay, it's got a spare. Got some old bags. So, it's not bad, and it is power too, so I'm surprised. So I think I'm gonna have to do some research as far as, you know, do these come with some sort of a special limo package? Because just by looking at it, I don't see much difference as far as the length goes. But then let's see. I mean, this door does open quite wide and it's almost at a 90 degree angle. So now I'm thinking maybe there is some sort of a limo version. It's weird they don't see they don't see Lincoln on here. What about the front? Yeah, on the front it does. Okay. So they cheaped out a little bit there. Hmm. Okay. So this was a look at a Lincoln Continental, the actual limo. I, you know, honestly, I don't see too many of these. I think most people, they switch to like SUVs, like this. See, I wonder if this is open. You know, this is an older style Ford Expedition. Yeah, see, exactly. That's why I left coming here. So this is a limo style car with running boards. Oh God, it is extremely hot. So it's got 88,000 miles. It's an older style expedition, so it's a previous generation. I don't really know what that is, probably a mount for something. See, it's got business cards of some, uh, yeah, of uh, some sort of a delivery service, like limo. So an older style expedition, yeah. This one does have heated and cooled seats, and because there are actual buttons, I could, I could see and talk about them. I like how these systems, they work even without the key. Hmm. Yeah, no key detected. So this is a push button. Okay, I think the older uh, one of these, they did not have that feature. So, hmm, interesting. The seats are, are, once again, more harsh in this thing, but this thing was built on a brawny SUV and then all the, the hard plastics. And... Okay. Weird that this one... Oh, yeah, it does have... I was just about to say, it doesn't have adjustable pedals. Yeah, it does, right up here. Forgot that they used to put them here. But, yeah, this one also has one of those sync systems with, uh, let's see, climate controls and stuff. Okay, yeah. Not bad. Oh, and then this is interesting because it's worked with sync, so they have Sony-branded... Sony-branded speakers. So look at this. So yeah, you see, modern folks, they want one of these pulling up to their driveway if they are indeed ordering, you know, an airport service or they have an important meeting or they have a customer to pick up. They don't want these. So I think it's a lot rarer to see this than this. So back here... Oh, so this is a three-row, okay, because it's an expedition. They come with it standard. So let's see. I think the seat is all the way back, but even with that, I have plenty of room. I mean, I'm touching the back seat, but not too bad. So, yeah, you got standard sunroof. You got all the controls down here. This is actually um, nice and clean. I like this, this pattern for wood. It's kind of unique. I'm not going to climb in the back. Way too hot for that. Oops. So I like this uh, running boards that disappear. So this is, oh, okay. So this is an Expedition Limited. That's why it has all the, the features. And this is also an EL, which signifies that it has, it has three rows plus 
Look at this spider web. So it has a bunch more room behind the third row because the standard expedition, I think, would just end right here. But because it's an L, so you have more room and plus that shelf kind of adjusts. So yeah, it's got the strap. And I think I think this is a power operator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. So that's interesting right here. Hmm. Well, you got another Continental. This one's also unlocked. But it's also the base model, so I'm not going to get in there. Yeah, the rear, yeah, I think so. These things, they come with pretty long rear doors. Let's see. Am I going to hit a trifecta and that MKT also unlocked or what? See, this is what they call town car these days. Yeah, see, they don't, they don't lock their cars. But I've already looked at, a, at an MKT with previous videos and I actually jumped in to the limo style. Actually, with an actual limo for these. So not a whole lot to see here, but this would be like a standard wheelbase MKT, what is used for livery service. So this is weird, right? So here, this, this being an older model, uh, I like how these mirrors come down. So this being an older model, you see, they weren't ashamed of sticking their emblems even inside. Look, you have one on the steering wheel, and then you have these wood panels, which I'm not sure if this is specifically for the, the limo version, the town car version or not. But look, this is fancy. Now, it's not necessary. Everybody knows it's a Lincoln MKT. But I like this little detail, you see? I say use this more often. And then they have these industrial looking pockets. So I think this is what makes a, like a town car, quote unquote town car, town car, is like these little limo touches. Plus you can adjust, I think the seats. Yeah, yeah, plus you see, this is what makes it a town car because you can adjust the front seat right here on the door. And obviously you can't do it there for the driver not to crash. This is like the quote unquote, the town car package where it, it will come with these little extra niceties. Plus, I think, oh, even like right here, this little wood paneling, maybe that's like an extra luxury. Yeah, because this is different than it would be on a civilian version. So, that's interesting. I actually rode once in an Uber in one of these things as an Uber driver was driving. And so I've seen and I've been in these before. All right, so as I continue to explore, I'll probably cut this video out. And I'll start fresh. So thanks all for liking, subscribing, and commenting. You guys keep me going. You guys make it interesting. And, you know, the fact that it's almost 100 degrees and I'm at a parking lot shooting cars when no one's watching, to me, that's the greatest motivation when somebody likes, subscribes, and comments. So thank you.